For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Thank you. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Through the prayers of all thy saints, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us and save us. O oh God, cleanse me a sinner, have mercy on me. O oh God, cleanse me a sinner, and have mercy on me. O oh God, cleanse me a sinner, have mercy on me. O oh heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O oh good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. It is time for the Lord to act. Bless, Master. Blessed is our God, always now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray for me, Master. 
May the Lord direct your steps. May the Lord God remember you in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and to ages of ages. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. To thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
For thine is the majesty, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Thou art a good God and lovest mankind, and unto Thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Master, Lord our God, who has appointed in heaven orders and hosts of angels and archangels for the service of Thy glory, grant that with our entrance there may be an entrance of holy angels with us in glorifying thy goodness. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>
of thy saints always now and ever and unto ages and ages. Thyself, O Master, accept even from the mouths of us sinners and thrice holy hymn. Visit us in thy goodness, forgive us every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Sanctify our souls and bodies, and enable us to serve thee in holiness all the days of our life. Through the intercession of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints, and from the beginning of the world, and the world is in the
for holy art thou, O our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. to all and to your spirit the Burkimanon in the second tone the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation chastened me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. While we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will dare even to die, but God chose his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we are now justified by his blood, which much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Peace be unto you, reader. And to your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Illumine in the our second hearts, O oh Master, who lovest mankind with the pure light of thy divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our minds to the understanding of thy gospel teachings and plant also in us the fear of thy blessed commandments and trampling down all carnal desires we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living while thinking and doing such the things. The Lord so answer you in the day of thee. trouble. The name of thou the God of the Jacob protect you. the of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory together with thy Father who is an everlasting and thine all holy good and life great spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Say 
save the King, O Lord, and hear us on the day we call. May God, through the prayers of the holy, glorious, and all audible apostle and evangelist Matthew, enable you to proclaim the glad tidings with great power to the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, stand aright. Let us hear the holy gospel. Peace be unto all. reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. The Lord said, the eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Peace be unto you, proclaim the gospel. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. There's a line in the liturgy, we hear it every time. Now lay all earthly cares aside, that we may receive the King of all who comes invisibly upborne by the angelic hosts, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That's really what this is about today, the gospel reading, and I guess probably I would also say is one of the biggest challenges that we have as Christians living in the world. Maybe during liturgy, we can for a while lay our earthly cares aside, and maybe concentrate on praying for a while, offering ourselves to God, anticipating the reception of Holy Communion. But then, after we leave the church building, 
we get out into the world and back into our routines again, I think the church and prayer and God kind of take a little bit of a back seat to all the rest of the stuff that we face in our lives, all the rest of the stuff that seems so important to us. We are, after all, very busy people, especially this time of year, right? Maybe you got plans, going on vacation, summer camp, travel, holiday weekend, gatherings, get-togethers. You're very much concerned about the details of our life. Our appearance, clothing, food, drink, where we're going and how we're going to get there, price of gasoline, canceled flights. What do we find when we get there? Is there going to be an outbreak of COVID? Do we have to wear masks? Do we have to pack them with us? All kinds of stuff to remember. But in the midst of all of this busyness, our Lord today gives us some advice. Paraphrasing, he says, be careful where you look, what you set your gaze upon. For whatever that is, it will fill you. It will occupy your time and your attention. Now, I always thought that this particular gospel passage was one of the most comforting ones in all of Scripture because it tells us basically not to worry. Trust in God. But it's also, in addition to being very comforting, in a bit also convicting and challenging to us. He starts out by talking about two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You just can't do it. You're going to prefer one over the other sooner or later. And what he's referring to is basically God and the things of the world. But I would also maybe make this a bit more pointed, our attachment and relationship to the things of the world. In other words, us. We're the other master. You either serve yourself or you serve God. It's kind of an interesting way of putting it because we don't often think about ourselves as servants, really. We think about ourselves as masters. We're masters of our destiny. We have to take care of ourselves, make plans, and make sure everything's working okay. As we get older, we're responsible for all kinds of things. But in my childlike mind, when I first remember hearing these, this passage, I kept thinking of almost like the vision of a railroad track and you're trying to walk on both rails. And you can do that for a while, maybe. But then if you could imagine the rails aren't parallel anymore, but they're diverging. They're getting a little bit further apart. Well, sooner or later, you can't walk on both rails anymore. You've got to pick one. And that's really kind of a visual, I think, of the challenge of our spiritual lives. Two masters, mammon, world, us, and God. So which one do we pick? Well, it seems easy to say, oh yes, well, we're gonna pick God, of course. You know, he's most important to us. But then we have this tension where, yeah, we picked that, but we still can't ignore all the rest of the stuff that even we could say God puts in our lives, our responsibilities and the things that we gotta take care of. But he brings it back to vision. We've talked in quite a few of the sermons and gospel readings up till now about eyes and vision and seeing and what you see. And it isn't just physical, of course. Uh, the, the eyes of the soul. What do we see? Do we see life through those eyes primarily or through the physical eyes? Well, it's always a little bit of both. But I think we need to kind of also ramp up our habit train ourselves to look at life through the eyes of the soul more often. Since I think it is they that he is referring to that allow us to see the light of Christ, which illumines all things. Light and darkness, the two scriptural key words that characterize either the kingdom of God or the fallen world. So what do we see, even though we're in the fallen world? 
According to St. John's Gospel, Christ is the light who comes into this world of darkness to illumine it. We are told, though, even though he does that, that some prefer the darkness to the light. And we like to say, because we're in church and we read the scriptures and pray, that, oh yeah, those other people, they prefer the darkness to the light. But in fact, I think if we're honest with ourselves, there are times when we kind of prefer the darkness to the light. We want to take refuge in that darkness. In the darkness of the world, the things that are comfortable and familiar to us, we're happy with that most of the time. But yet, the reference here is to remind us of something very important spiritually. To spiritual light, not physical light. The light of truth that illumines the mind and the soul of each one of us that we get in scripture and we get in the church. And what is that truth? I mean, even the basic relationship that we have of things in the world and other people in the world. Where are we? What are we doing? Well, we're little tiny creatures on a huge globe of stuff, matter, earth. And this huge globe has us stuck on the surface with this thing called gravity, which we understand is a law, but we don't really understand how it works. We stand there, we don't float off into space. You know? Gravity. Not only are we on this huge sphere that's rotating constantly, but it's revolving around the sun, this blazing orb, and everything's precisely metered out, the light, the day, the darkness, the temperatures, the seasons, summer, winter, fall, spring. And we predict it, right? We've got weathermen, weather women. They tell us what the weather's gonna be. Sometimes they're right. God knows what it's gonna be, we don't. There's a basic humility to this grand truth that we are in the universe that we didn't make that God made, that is so vast, goes on and on forever. You can't even count how many star systems and galaxies and planets and moons and things there are. When you look at that aspect of the world and creation, I think we become somewhat more humble. We're not the masters of our destiny. We didn't make any of this stuff. It's only by God's grace that we get to live in it. It's only by God's grace that the weather once in a while cooperates and we don't drown, we don't dry up. We have at least some clothing to wear when it gets cold, air conditioners maybe when it gets hot. But really, there's so very little that we have control over. But in the midst of all of this, it isn't um, just about trying to be humble, it's about choices, it's about right vision, seeing things for the way they really are and making choices that reflect that. Light and darkness, heaven and earth, God and man. For a while during our earthly lives here, we Christians live in and for both, walking on both rails of the train track. We're in the world, but we're not of the world, we're told. We have to eat and drink and rest and put clothes on. We have to have a job, make money, spend money and all that. But these matters shouldn't be our prime concern. They shouldn't consume us, is what Christ is saying. We often even define ourselves as consumers. But these things shouldn't consume us. After all, largely, our physical strength, our health, even the length of our lives, the duration of our lives, is completely out of our control. We can do some things, maybe, to take better care of our bodies a little bit. But overall, you can't control that. Which of us, as Christ said, can add one cubit to our lifespan by being anxious? Now there's where we live. We're anxious. There is a hymn that the church sings, uh, sort of generic, but I remember it in connection with Mary of Egypt, but a lot of the ascetics, we sing the same hymn. It says, make no provision for the flesh, for it passes away. Care instead for the soul, for it is immortal. And yet, as I finish that, and we're done with liturgy, I'm thinking, man, I really want a cup of coffee. I wonder what we're having for coffee hour. Maybe I'll go out to dinner tonight. I'm thinking about the flesh again. Can't help it. 
There's great persistence and temptation to go along this way. But even our prayer at times is largely concerned about asking God for temporal and physical things, safety, health, protection, career opportunities, etc. In this way, we're a lot like everybody else. Maybe people who don't believe in God or pay any attention to that. What advantage is there in being Christian and praying and going to church sometimes, we ask. Our Lord says the Gentiles seek all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But Christ presents us with a better way. Seek first your heavenly Father's kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be yours as well. In other words, have the right priorities in your life. Don't put the stuff first. Put the giver and creator of the stuff first. That's really what it comes down to. And how wonderful if we actually pull this off. How liberating it is. What joy and peace we can have when we live in this way. And I think, actually, we've talked a lot about saints in the past few weeks with the Pentecost and all. If you want to point out any one difference that the, the recognized saints have over us and different, is that they maybe made that choice. That's about it. They made the choice to put God first. And no longer, when we do that, are we slaves to earthly things and cares and even ourselves and our will. But by being concerned with God, we're free. We're free to trust in his loving kindness and good providence for us. And he takes better care of us than we can take care of ourselves. And this is in part, I think, what Christ means when he says we have to become like little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is the way we all start out, if you think about it. Not a care in the world. Trusting in and depending on love and care of our parents, grandparents, family, friends, whatever. Only later, as we grow older, do we find ourselves concerned and anxious about our own well-being. Brings to mind Christ's words in another place. <clears throat> he who seeks to save his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake and the kingdom will find it. The great paradox. You've got to die to live. You've got to die to yourself. Crucify your ego and your will. Do God's will and then you'll live. It's the same message packaged in a different way for us today. But I think a very poignant and powerful way. So let us take time to examine our priorities as this summer season unfolds. And the cares of life press down upon us. What can we actually use as an actual measure of our true priorities? How do we know where we stand? Are we eating the bread of anxious toil, which always fails to satisfy us? I think to gauge where we are, we need to examine what we spend most of our time and attention and even money on. What we're concerned with and doing, we see clearly what matters most to us. How much of our day is taken up with prayer? The reading of the Bible, the lives of the saints. How many hours in any given week are devoted to worship, coming to church? What amount of time is truly given in service to the Lord to do things that we may not want to do, but that the Lord says we should do? Now, honest answers to these questions may surprise and disappoint us if we ask those questions and answer them in an honest way. But those answers may help us to become better people. Where our treasure is, there will our hearts be indeed. So let's take the last verse of this gospel lesson as a challenge from God. In essence, he's asking, do you trust me? If so, make choices that reflect that. Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and I will take care of all the other stuff. Amen. Thank you.
For thou art a merciful God and lovest mankind, <clears throat> and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
that with us they may glorify thine all-honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. That guarded always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Sing the thrice holy hymn to the life greeting Trinity. Now lay aside all earthly cares. Let us who mystically represent the cherubim to sing the thrice holy hymn to the life greeting Trinity. Now lay aside all earthly cares. Let us who mystically represent the cherubim who sing the thrice holy hymn to the life greeting Trinity. Now lay aside all earthly cares. <clears throat> o God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. Forgive us, brothers and sisters in Christ.
nothing here for lower members of the kingdom always not over in two ages of ages on end. The Synod of Bishops of the Orthodox Church in America, the Honorable Priesthood, the Diaconate in Christ, all those in the monastic orders, readers, singers, and servers of our Church, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The President of these United States, all those serving in seats of civil authority, those serving in our armed forces, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. All those who are sick and suffering in any kind of need, affliction, or distress, those who are grieving, <clears throat> those who are persecuted for their faith throughout the world, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. All those who have departed this life before us in the hope of the resurrection to life eternal, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Those who are traveling, those who are absent from the service for a cause worthy of a blessing, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. A newly baptized child, Timothy Daniel, his sponsors and family, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may our good Lord remember in his kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. <coughs> the noble Joseph, and you taken down thy most pure body, wrapped in the fine linen, and went to the spices, laid in the tomb, tomb of the body, and the soul of paradise, with the teeth from the son of thy kingdom, and fell upon the Christ, and the Bearing life more fruitful than paradise, by the royal chamber, thy tomb of Christ, and the fountain of our resurrection. Do good design, and thy good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, then will thou life. Sacrifice of the burnt offerings and old burnt offerings, then bulls will be offered on thy altar. Remember me, brother and fellow minister. May the Holy Spirit descend on you and the power of the Most High overshadow you. God remember you in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Through the compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And to strength, the Lord is my firm foundation. Oh, my refuge. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge. Oh, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is meet and right to him, thee to bless thee, praise thee, give thanks to thee, and worship thee in every place of thy dominion. For thou art God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, and eternally the same. Thou and thine only begotten Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Thou it was who brought us from non existence into being, and when we had fallen away, did raise us up again, and did not cease to do all things until thou had brought us up to heaven, and had endowed us with thy kingdom, which is to come. For all these things we give thanks to thee and to thine only begotten Son and to thy Holy Spirit, for all things of which we know and of which we know not, whether manifest or unseen. And we thank thee for this liturgy, which thou hast deigned to accept at our hands, though there stand by thee thousands of archangels and hosts of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, who soar aloft, borne on their pinions, 
singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Lord of sound, behold, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. With these blessed powers, O Master, who lovest mankind, we also cry aloud and say, Holy art thou, and all holy thou, and thine only begotten Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Holy art thou, and all holy and magnificent is thy glory, who has so loved thy world as to give thine only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <coughs> who, when he had come and had fulfilled all the dispensation for us, in the night in which he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, and when he had given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. <coughs> and likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Remembering the saving commandment and all those things which have come to pass for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming. Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all and for all. <coughs> o Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. O Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. Again we offer unto thee this reasonable and bloodless worship, and ask thee and pray thee and supplicate thee, send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offered. Bless Master the Holy Bread. Make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. Bless Master the Holy Cup. That which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Bless <laughs> Making the change by thy Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord God remember you in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. That they may be to those who partake for the purification of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion of thy Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards thee and not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer unto thee this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, ancestors, fathers, mothers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith, especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary.
Among the first, remember, O Lord, his beatitude, a metropolitan take on, grant him for thy holy churches, in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to define the word of thy truth. <coughs> And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be with all of you. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call on thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say...
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Peace be unto all. We give thanks unto thee, O King Invisible, who by thy measureless power did make all things, and in the greatness of thy mercy did bring all things from non-existence into being. Look down from heaven, O Master, upon those who have bowed their heads unto thee, the awesome God. Do thou thyself, O Master, distribute these gifts here offered unto all of us for good, according to the individual need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel by land and by air. Heal the sick, O thou who art the physician of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and compassion and love toward mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all-holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. <coughs> the holy things for the holy. <coughs> Divided yet not disunited. Is every yet ever consumed, but sanctifying those who partake thereof. Jesus Christos Nika, Jesus Christ the Conqueror, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the warmth of thy holy things, always now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that Thou art truly the Christ. <coughs> I believe also that this is truly Thy most pure body. This is truly Thy own precious blood. Therefore, I pray Thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgression, both voluntary and involuntary, a word and a deed, committed in knowledge and ignorance and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries for the remission of my sins and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to thine enemies, neither like Jesus will I give thee a kiss. Like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy most pure mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen. Lo, I draw near to my immortal King and God. <coughs> Deacon Dr
Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens and thy glory over all the earth. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. Worshiping the undivided truth. Let 
blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. O Lord, who blesses those who bless thee and sanctifies those who trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house, glorify them in return by thy divine power, and forsake us not who put our hope in thee, give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, to all those in civil authority, and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind always now and ever and through ages of ages. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, and all audible apostles of our Father among the saints, John Christus, the Archbishop of Constantinople, of St. Mark the Evangelist, patron of our church, St. Herman of Alaska, St. Innocent, apostle to America, of all the saints who have arisen in this land, the martyr Hyacinth of Caesarea, whom we commemorate today, 
of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. We will intone many years for all our July birthdays now. A peaceful and prosperous life, health, salvation, visitation, furtherance, and all blessed things. Grant a Lord unto your servants who are celebrating their birthdays this month. Jackson, Jean, Andrew, Emma, Patricia, Scott, Michael, Aaron, Larissa, Spencer, Joseph, Lucas, Anne Marie, Sarah, EJ, Montesha, Alexandra, Aiden, Charity, Daniel, Vicky, Montesha, Kelly, Laura, Douglas, John, Elowen, Virginia, Benjamin, Cliff, Jenya, Julia, Drew, David, and Billy, and preserve them for many, many years. <laughs> seat. Just have a few announcements, the first of which is my great joy uh, to welcome Deacon Nicholas Dumovich, his wife Kathy, and their boys here today, all the way from Falls Church, Virginia, a long way away. Welcome. It was a pleasure to serve with you. Thank you for helping out. I'd like to welcome all other visitors we have with us and invite you to stay for some coffee and light refreshments, although it'll be a little bit heavier today. We've got some leftovers. Good stuff. Fourth of July weekend, right? Downstairs, back to thinking about our earthly appetites and food. But it'll be nice. Okay. Uh, on your way out of church, please pick up your copy of our uh, St. Mark newsletter, quarterly newsletter, the latest edition for July, August, and September. Should be on the table just outside as you leave to go downstairs. We have a bizarre planning committee a bleh, bleh. Try it again. Take two. Bazaar planning meeting. There will be a bazaar planning meeting on Saturday, July 16th at 4.30 prior to Vespers. That's actually the only Saturday this month that we could pull that off, I think, because July is baby month here at St. Mark. Three babies being baptized. So our congratulations and love go out to the Bassick family for the baptism of Timothy Daniel, who received communion for the very first time today. Good job. Nicely done. Okay. And there's something else. Hang on. Kitchen notes. This one didn't make it into the bulletin, but I am charged to read it to you. The towel and apron cabin cabinet has been straightened out. You know what that means. You've got to keep it clean. When you use towels or aprons for coffee hour or any other event downstairs in the hall, please launder them, fold them, and fit them back into one of the piles in the cabinet. It takes only a few extra seconds to keep the cabinet tidy. Please fold the apron ties inside the folded apron. Please remember that the dark green embroidered aprons are for the bazaar and special events and should be put into the red bin in the bottom of the cabinet after laundering. We have more than enough kitchen towels at this time. Please do not put bathroom towels in this cabinet. There's more. Please, <laughs> a little bit more. Um, remember to run the garbage disposal after each coffee hour or event so that food particles don't sit in the disposal for weeks at a time, causing an assault to the nasal cavities. That's not in the bulletin, but the buttons are at knee level, got to bend down. Push forward to start the disposal and stop to end while running the sprayer. Push hard on the buttons because they are old and may stick a little, just like me. Okay, I think that was probably more than you needed to know from me, but... <laughs> okay, this week, let's see what's happening. Uh, actually, next Saturday, baptism of Martin Steger Miller at 4 p.m. prior to Vespers. 
Have a great 4th of July weekend. Hopefully we'll start it together uh, downstairs and have some coffee together and talk. Christ is in our midst.